Hey, I'm Nickathlon Gamer, and welcome to Farm Manager World. This is episode one to a brand new Let's Play for this title. This is actually the third title in a series. Uh, they've had a development cycle of three years running, and I've played each of the previous two, Farm Manager 18 and Farm Manager 21, and it's, it's definitely a fun title, and I'm looking forward to getting into what Farm Manager World has to offer. The game comes with single player and multiplayer modes. In the single player mode, there are scenarios, primary campaign, along with a free mode. At the moment, as the game is releasing into early access, there are eight scenarios available. The campaign begins in Europe, moves to Central America. Eventually, they will add Asia to the list. The game's tutorial comes with the European campaign, and so we will begin from there, even though I'm familiar with the game. It has been a few years. So we open in Europe with Chapter 1, A New Beginning. As the tutorial quickly skips through some basics, it uh, looks like we're going to be spending half of our funding uh, up front to buy our farm. For those familiar with the older Farm Manager titles, uh, the biggest change for this year is the introduction of crop rotation and field pH, which just provides a ton more detail uh, regarding you know the, the ground nutrients and and whatnot, uh, which is all going to impact yield and growth cycles and, and adds a lot more depth to the game. As we're going through the tutorial phase of this, it's very much headed in a singular direction, getting us to plant a single crop for now. It'll open things up here pretty quickly with larger do-it-yourself objectives. So we've placed our first house. This is a uh, seasonal workers building. As that gets constructed, it does take time. That's one of the features of this game. Nothing's instant. I see the seasonal workers one has a lot more detail than what it had in previous versions where we have time frame, cost, number of workers, all of those things uh, are now optionally selected here. So we have April 1st to October 30th. Oh, so work mode, we have uh, allow automatic machine working or we can do manual automatic work. So as our first manual field work uh, gets underway here with that tutorial phase, uh, we've got 450,000, I'm sure, as we have zero equipment right now. We're going to be making some investments with that here very soon in this early phase. We're, we're going to be right down to next to nothing uh, before too long as this first field, which is certainly not going to be a terribly profitable field at this point you you would imagine there's a lot left for uh this field in in regards to how much kind of profit it's going to be bringing in for us all right so already they're starting to push us into that next phase a larger field fit for five workers choose our own crop so a little less guaranteed a little less automatic as we go forward for our Next objective, 0.04 hectares though, that's not that big. Next up is placing a warehouse, so we're gonna get that down uh, while work begins on our second field, which I've picked barley for an initial. Uh, it's a pretty generic one, grows in a wide range. I haven't gotten to know our climate that well other than the obvious that it's moderate. Farmhouse is our headquarters for everything. And our first permanent housing house has been built. That sets us up for kind of the next phase as we go along here. We need to assign an employee to the farm owner's house to work there. Looks like we don't get a choice on our first one. Uh, and actually, I don't think it necessarily matters. They seem to all be the same other than their monthly cost being a little different. I'd certainly like to go for somebody a little cheaper if they are all the same, but we're gonna hire Tommy Buckley. Next up for us is our first greenhouse, and this one has that controlled environment, nice rich soils that are well-maintained and temperature control. And we're gonna be setting this one to guava. We're gonna start our chicken coop, and there's a mix of young laying hens and older laying hens, different prices. 
they want us to uh, follow a certain pattern on this one. And here is our new chicken coop and new worker, Henry Pierce, that we have hired to uh, assist with this. And here is the delivery of the animals. And they've all arrived, so we are getting into the next phase of this one. First task was to provide food and set up uh, our auto sale on how to make money. It's all mostly automated, or at least can be automated. If you do things manual, it's a lot trickier, but uh, setting key amounts of you want to have always 50 soy, you always want to have 50 wheat in stock is a big key to making things function in the game. Profit is not yet our middle name, right? We're still just getting going. We're, we're just getting the chickens fed. Our first crops are still growing. We're a long ways off from bringing in any kind of money. We're down to 378k, but it looks like we are now kind of locked into the wrap up your at least first phase uh, tutorial to get things going. I think we're going to end up with a fresh start. Uh, relatively soon that becomes a bit more open-ended but there's our first 11 uh, eggs coming in uh, the first crop the first one we got ready the gooseberries will be ready in 31 days so it's gonna be a while uh, the barley it's still not even planted it's only cultivated we only have five employees uh, guava is also beginning the cultivation now cultivated uh, just a little bit later so it's it's a little while before you know any of these are going to be done it's it's difficult with so few employees all doing everything manually but with things fully automated at the moment it's it's making it quite possible you know we're get, we're getting those eggs laid uh, those first 11 just sold others have come in they just haven't sold yet and try to keep some food in the warehouse. More deliveries coming in to uh, provide the food we need. It gets a lot easier, a lot, lot easier uh, when you're providing those crops yourself and not having to turn around and buy. Next task for animal husbandry is to raise cattle beginning with a barn and from the construction, they're making it look quite large, but you can now see the uh, outline of it. It's nearly complete. And we also have our uh, our manure storage and that just like that we've got our dairy cows up and running this is all fairly easy tasks when you have played the previous versions it would take a little bit longer to kind of follow along with the game it does a good job of only giving you what you need at the time and then opening things up to you as you go along there's a lot of different options to click there's a lot to forget uh, early on like any good game that you're going to have some sort of development phase to it, you've got to learn. You've got to go through some type of skill tree here. It's it's education certificates. I like how they've got that set up. Uh, but we're going to start our first one for a effective task delegation, which is going to unlock second worker slot in the owner's house. There's requirements before you can take the, the various uh, services or the various schoolings. Checking back in on those initial fields, uh, we still have not gotten through the gooseberries. It's It's been roughly one month uh, since we started. The barley is now growing and then the guava is also finally <laughs> growing, spraying in progress right now but still pretty early on for that. But it's just been planted. So you can see the task lists as you go through. This one's down to just watering and harvesting. And here, we've got a ways to go. As we come to the end of our course, we'll see what is the follow-up here. Hire and assign a second employee to the farm owner's house, preferably with shipping skills. Uh, I really like how the game has you do something it holds your hand but that it has you do a similar task at some point and it circles back and it doesn't normally do it immediately it comes back to it a little bit later but 
that second time around, it, it opens it up and kind of forces you to make sure you actually learned what there was. That, that's one thing that tutorials notoriously get wrong is they hold your hand so much, so effectively that you don't actually learn anything. You're just following like, click here, click here, I'm gonna click here. You don't actually learn anything from them. Well, anyway, this one makes sure that you have learned things by reining back in that hand holding. Next up, two more greenhouses, again with that circling back. Uh, make sure you know how to do things yourself. We need to grow melons and bok choy in two more greenhouses. I know we're not going to be, uh, I'm not setting up the most efficient space that I can. More of just a, hey, let's get through the chapter one tutorial. So build two greenhouses, speed things up, get it done. Let's also add a couple more seasonal workers. Okay, we definitely want to warm things up a bit for the melons. I don't know what the ideal temperature would be, but it, we're at the bottom end of it, so we definitely want to bring it up. Bok choy. Looks like we'll want 61 for this. So next we can change our uh, priority of fields so that they don't just generically go through and do every single task that's out there randomly without your control. Quickly making their way through uh, our field processes, we're you know, looking pretty good uh, with things. It's just a matter of getting these two fields planted right now to get through that next task. Uh, as for our other fields, the gooseberries are nearly done. We're gonna have our first harvest. Uh, we're not turning a profit right now. We're still spending more than we are making, but uh, thanks to the dairy cows and thanks to uh, the eggs coming from the hens, we, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. We're not losing rapidly, but we're, we're definitely spending pretty quickly. But here is our first harvest happening now. And that would turn a pretty penny if we were to sell it. Uh, we would need to set up a sell order, even if just one time. The thing to watch out for right now is the demand. Minus 4% is not bad. Almost like to hang on to it a little bit and see that price go up. And actually, for all I know, the game might even want to tell me when to sell that. So we'll hang on to it a little bit longer. You can definitely set things up automatically to just bring that money in as soon as you get through a certain stage uh, or not or sit on it and wait for the price to be right. Melons are planted. The bok choy is getting planted right now. It will be done here momentarily. We started around the 1st of April. It's now mid-June. So this is all, all happened within a couple of months. Oh, so there's I don't remember this one being in the previous farm manager games. So you have trading partners. You can purchase contracts, sale contracts with buy and sell options between each other, which is going to build a reputation, which actually improves what you get. Next task is turn a profit. We're already not even far from that. And I have not sold uh, any of our harvests yet. And that's going to be a quick way to turn that profit. Glad that I, uh, held off on that short term uh, but uh, we also need to do warehouse transportation techniques let's go ahead and get started on that part first some of these tasks seem a little benign you know on the surface this one is increased carrying capacity of owners house workers to 400 kilograms but the deliveries come to the house so they bring the, the items in by increasing their carrying weight they're going to unload things faster that's that's the bottom line for that one. Okay, we only need it for a single month. Um, the easy thing here, the very easy thing, is to sell those gooseberries. And those gooseberries, it's actually not even enough to uh, turn a profit yet, is it? No, not even close. Such a small field. Ooh, we have a limit on our auto trade. Okay. The milk right now would add up to uh, 5,000. 
that's not enough to turn a profit. So we want to sit on some of these products a little bit. We just need to make a profit a single month, which means a few harvests. Uh, the smallest gooseberries isn't going to do much for us. It grows fast. It's a tiny field. The yield is low. But the barley will be ready in 41 days. The guava is not going to be ready anytime soon. The melons will be ready in 60 and the bok choy in 40. So it looks like we've got a couple minute, months to wait on a few harvests to come together. And then we can uh, sell everything at once. And mm, my guess is that's probably the final stage of things. Oh, some of this expires in 14 days. We have to, we're going to have to start selling that off. Uh, we're going to have to do this the hard way when it comes to making this. We've got to set up the auto trade. Uh, I set up one for sorghum to improve the variety for the cows, but then they had us buy the silage. So we're going to cancel the sorghum as we approach the end of June. We're up to nearly a positive balance. We're, we're not that far off now as it is. And actually, there's still a couple days left. Uh, let me see if we have anything to sell. Just the usual. Just the usual. No crops at the moment. But we've brought it to less than 10,000 negative. One bigger harvest not the gooseberries, but one bigger harvest, and we should have it, uh, which means just a matter of time. And as we start July, our negative balance isn't as bad because we haven't invested in any additions, any add-ons, any training programs. And so in just a matter of a few days as we're making money off of the eggs and milk, we're already down to under 7,500 so actually without even doing anything else we should be able to turn a profit this month even without a big harvest we might just get there uh, we did harvest gooseberries like on the first or 31st something like that so as we were transitioning into the month and that can provide a little extra income we'll do that now because I do think this is the month where we could uh, make it happen it's already down to 4k so do we have anything that's less than three weeks well barley barely melons no and the bok choy barely so worst case scenario it's going to be august as for uh the gooseberries they've got a quick turnaround time now and we can harvest them pretty often but like i said i don't even think we're going to need to get to august and our first big harvest looks like we're going to be profitable just for july halfway through the month just 500 dollars left to cover and they're actually already calling us profitable the next thing they want is to complete a sale contract uh, melon 31 days until it's done but bok choy has just 11 days remaining and then we can harvest so we've got to get to the end of the month and then we have something that we can sell and that's that's going to be the key there is that first month turn it a profit already though plus five thousand by mid-month expenses always coming out at the start of the month means things are uh, looking good at, at the moment this is now a profitable farm Ooh, not all of our expenses maybe just orders regarding uh, resources could have been all right bok choy harvest is beginning you know they're getting through there's really just that couple rows of bok choy that that's planted okay let's slow things down that is just about complete now it's a matter of how much do we have we have 400 units which is 1200 kilograms it looks like now the trick is finding demand because there was demand for it two weeks ago. There isn't now. I'm glad I hadn't accepted the contract because, well, for one, we didn't have what they needed and it expires after a short... I guess you could accept the contract. I think expires does not mean that's your delivery date. They just want you to deliver it. But it'll disappear off the list? That That's the question now that I don't 
have an answer to just yet. I think we planted barley here. We did. It's bearing fruit now. It's ready to harvest. Not enough space. We need more space in the warehouse for the barley. Oof. Okay. The warehouse has a lot of space in it. Or maybe it's not into the barley. It's a silo kind of thing. And all we have is a small silo. I need a I need another small silo. Now the big question is can they harvest barley manually? Because we're definitely getting warnings about not having machinery. There. Okay. We're just set to automatic work now or manual work. And the warnings went away. So it does look like we can do it manually. It's going to be a difficult task. We can absolutely do the barley if <laughs> if we can get it harvested this week there we go there is our manual harvest and we're getting lots of barley from it and that contract should be able to be completed shortly okay put the field harvested it's now going to be a matter of delivering those supplies to the silos and i think at this point with some of that into the silos we should now have enough to, yes, to deliver. So let's see if we can complete the contract. There we go, delivery. And we receive a subsidy of 200K. You get extra pay for those contracts on top of what you would normally get. That becomes an incredibly profitable month for us as we're sitting at 500K back to where we were from when we purchased the farm, right? We started with a million, we spent 500,000 for the land and the farmhouse we've now got more money than we started from that point anyway and that's the end of chapter number one so that's going to do it for this first episode of farm manager world chapter one in the books that is definitely the tutorial out of the way except there's still going to be little bits of tutorial going into the next chapters as it introduces a wider variety of options into the game but the hand-holding is very much behind you at this point. Objectives will still be a thing as you play through the campaign. But that's going to do it for this one. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.